Yesterday, you may recall, we were out at the project site doing videos of uh, mini block manufacturing. And we're back in the laboratory today at home uh, because we didn't get around to making any lime stabilized mini blocks. So we're going to do that today. But before we do that, before we make this lime, lime block, uh, let's take a look at what we've got here. These are three blocks I made a couple of weeks ago that are just soil. Uh, to two different soils from, from the land in uh, Borden County. Mix two to one, three to one, and four to one. Uh, yesterday, we used the three to one mix to make different percents of stabilization. This is a three to one soil uh, mix with 5% Portland cement. This is 7% Portland cement, 10%. This is a real beauty, uh, three to one, 10% Portland. Now these are just a couple of days old, so we're not ready to drop them into water or anything. We're all, but when they cure, we will. We'll drop them in a bucket of water and see uh, how much difference uh, the various percentages of stabilizer make. This, uh, behind these mini blocks, is a shrink box. Uh, this is actually uh, calibrated to, to be exact. The, um, each of these channels, we can do five different soils here. Uh, five slots. Uh, the slots have to be exactly an inch and a half by an inch and a half by two feet long. Uh, the reason they are that direction or that size is that there's a chart that goes with it uh, so that when it dries out completely and shrinks and then you as it shrinks it, it'll crack. You butter the the chambers first so that when it does shrink and crack you can put a uh, blade in here and push push it together. Uh, this one cracked here and here But we pushed it together. This one only cracked uh, one place very very small here This one cracked in three places And we push this one from this end um, But it's this distance this this or this <clears throat> that obviously show you how much your sample uh, shrunk and therefore uh, how much clay roughly is in it and what you need to do to it to make it work. These two samples right here <clears throat> are the two soils that we're mixing for these blocks. This is the sandier soil, very low clay content. This is a very high clay content and so you can see the difference right here. This shrunk more than, uh, more than an inch and what that tells you, yeah, inch and a quarter, what that tells you is, is too much clay. You need a sandier, sandier mix. So we're mixing this sandy soil with it and getting, um, getting these various, various mixtures here. Now, this is an old sample from, from long ago. Uh, but we did all of these blocks. These are just soil blocks. These are all cement stabilized today just for fun. Uh, or for science, we're going to make a couple of lime stabilized blocks. Again, we've got the same three to one mix here, uh, mixed until it's all the same color. That's what you want. We're going to do 8% lime in this mix just to see what happens from a stabilization point of view. And so it requires 21.61 grams of lime. There. There. There we go. Okay. And we're going to do 8% moisture in this one instead of the 10 we were doing yesterday. We want 23.49 grams of H2O. So once again, Sprinkle this in here. Line. We'll see if it passes a little squeeze test here. It holds together. It comes apart pretty easily. So this is a work. Here. So. Okay. OK, 
Okay, everything's good. There's the block. There it is. Okay. There. 8% lime with our three to one mix. Uh, you can see uh, the difference in the color here with the Portland cement versus the lime. Well, obviously a little lighter because it's white instead of gray. And this will have to cure for a couple of weeks before this one is actually done. Lime is a longer cure than the cement. The ASTM standard for cement is 28 days. Same for lime. But with our cement stabilized blocks, they're hard enough and cured enough, uh, typically in a week to 10 days, depending on temperature and humidity, uh, to lay in the wall and let them finish curing in the wall. The lime, you really want these lime blocks to, to cure completely before you, you take them out. What I like to say is you put them in a cool, dark place and let them dance for a month and they'll never divorce. If you take them out early, you might have marital problems. Okay, so there it is. A lime, lime stabilized mini block for testing. Okay, we did uh, a couple of jar tests yesterday. Put soil in the jar, filled it up with water, and shook it up until it all settled. Uh, this is the uh, high clay content soil uh, of these two samples that we've been using. And I don't know if the camera can really catch it here, but there's not much of a line here. This is clay. There's a little line right here you can see with some stuff that floated to the top. But um, not, not a whole lot here. What you can see from this is that the clay is expansive. We put this piece of tape right at the top of the mix before it uh, settled. And it settled, and now the, the material is... Uh, you know, about three-eighths, half an inch above here, showing that this clay is, is expansive. Not terribly so, but definitely expansive. It's not going to affect us in making these blocks because um, the other soil that we're mixing with it in a much larger um, quantity is, uh, is real sandy. And you can see a line here. This is all sand up to here. And then you've got the clay and silt above that. So this is a much sandier sample. So that's going to cut down this expansiveness. And also the stabilization uh, helps with the expansiveness. So there's the results or the jar test. It's hard for me to tell the difference between the clay and silt. Some silt particles are as small as clay. So you can't be certain that that quantity above the granules is clay. It's clay and silt. So... Is that And again, it'll tell you if you're highly expansive by going up above the piece of tape you put on there. At first, on this one, you know, it's not expansive at all. Uh, you know, there's nothing above the tape. Zero. It's sandy. So those are the, those are the two soils we mixed. Uh, the same two that we used to make these blocks. The same two that we tested in the, in the shrink box. And that's kind of our initial testing to see where we're at. Now, ultimately, when you decide about which one you think is the best, you can go to a testing lab, a soils engineering lab. Uh, we use uh, one in San Antonio, and uh, they can give you the exact uh, granular distribution. Um, if you do an Atterberg test, you get a plasticity index number that's very indicative of, of what's good for, for earth blocks. Um, so off to the lab we go after we do some of our home lab stuff.